Y'all know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. Welcome everyone to Down Down Up Up. I'm your boy here, Apollo, and it's time for those Money in the Bank predictions 2023. Happy Canada Day to all the brethren watching this in Canada with me, or anywhere else for that matter. Happy Canada Day, wherever you are. Because, oh, we get a nice little treat today, don't we? Or do we? Mm, this may be a big make or break night when it comes for WWE in 2023. We have certain expectations for this show. And if we don't get them, oh, people, people are going to be pissed. Although, either way, I'm really looking forward to this crowd. Oh, they were hot on SmackDown, weren't they? Let's try to do this one step at a time. Now, seven matches to call. We'll see what we can do. I don't predict kickoff matches anymore because they just don't seem to happen anymore. They love their talking, 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 talking. So let's jump right in. Matt Riddle is finally challenging Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. I like this. I like that this made the pay-per-view. I didn't think he was going to make the pay-per-view, but it did. And it should be a pretty darn good match. Uh, we've really uh, done the work on Riddle's ankle, which is funny because we really seem to be doing that a lot with Riddle the past couple of years. Always some kind of leg ankle injury or something. So that's obviously going to be a big target for Gunther. Not that he really needs a target to begin with. The man will close on your head off. And I can't see Gunther losing the championship here. He's close to a year at this point, right? Or is he already over a year? Let me know. I do not have the date memorized when he won the championship last year. But he's got to be either past it or close at this point. So I'm predicting a Gunther victory. Regain, uh, pardon me, retain the Intercontinental Championship. Hopefully this will be a fantastic barn burner of a match to watch. And... If anything, there were rumors that Randy Orton could show up again. Um, I didn't believe those rumors a few months ago, and I don't believe them now. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Next up, uh, Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, the Women's Tag Team Champions. They took care of the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. There ain't no more other women's tag titles besides what they're wearing in the WWE. Defend against Raquel Rodriguez and... Liv Morgan. I'm very happy she made it back in time. Uh, ironic for Money in the Bank, considering Ronda and Liv's history now comes full circle. It was a year ago at Money in the Bank where Liv Morgan won and cashed in on Ronda Rousey. So it's not as big as last year, but at least they have something to do this year. I would hope this can be a good tag match. Ronda and Shayna let me down at WrestleMania, but lately their matches seem to have been a lot better tag team wise so hopefully this will be pretty good but i'm not expecting a championship change no i i feel confident in saying ronda and shana keep the belts it really still only feels like they just won them um i'm not opposed to Liv and raquel taking them back at some point but i don't think this would be the time unless this is only put on for the purpose of a shock title change Maybe, because the only point for me seeing Ronda and Shane as tag champions, I want to see those two go at it. I think those two can have their own little barn burner, but we have to build to get there. We can't just pull it out of the wind like this. Anyway, you know what? Let, let, let's do a big match next. The Bloodline Civil War. That's right. Jey Uso finally had enough. Jim Uso had enough a while ago when we talked about the aftermath of Night of Champions. And we're getting them versus Roman and Sokoa at the pay-per-view today. So, Bloodline Civil War, are we implying Civil War as in, let's say, tornado tag, no disqualification? That's what I want to see. A regular tag team match, eh, well, it would give a chance for the crowd to be really worked over. But I kind of want to see these four just go at it. Especially after SmackDown, where they certainly went at it and were teasing more that Sokoa may not be in the best position after all at the moment of things. But we'll see about today. Um, if it's anything like what I saw Wednesday with Sting, Jericho, Darby, and Sammy, I'll take that. I'll take that as a fun dynamite. But who's going to win? Ah... 
I will pick the Usos. It's more a matter of they're Roman's cousins. Wouldn't you want to give this one to them and then go into SummerSlam with some amazing momentum? I, this is one time I'm not going to pick the Tribal Chief. And I should have seen things coming at Night of Champions, but I wasn't going to break something that has gotten me points the past three years now. But the Uso should win this, right? I Unless, unless... There is a cash-in mid-match. I, I gotta expect the Usos to win. I, I, I don't understand the point of them losing this. I really don't. That would really make things look bad for them if they lost this match. So I'll pick the Usos. I really don't know how we're going to get there. And to be honest, I don't want to think everything through. I want to be surprised watching this show. And plus, I already have other candidate festivities to put up with. Put up with. Enjoy thoroughly. But I'll pick the Usos. Let's try to keep going. Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, World Heavyweight Championship. I will state this right away. Rollins is amazing as world champion again. I'm getting some 2015 vibes off this. But he's just been so fun to see as the guy again on Raw. Putting in the work as the World Heavyweight Champion. I loved his match with Breaker on NXT. Uh, his match with Priest was fantastic. And now Finn, Finn is intense about this. He's ready for this. He's ready for this. Does he come out as the demon like Rollins sort of requested a few weeks ago? And no, I don't really think he needs to, but he might, he might, he might. It's just, I've lost all stock in the demon um, now with the Roman Reigns incident a couple of years ago and losing in Hell in a Cell to Edge. Uh, didn't mind Edge winning, but more just, oh, wow, the demon lost. Like, really, you didn't give it redemption for the Roman thing. So, I don't think he needs to, but I'm hoping for a good match, and I think we'll get it. Seth and Finn just have amazing chemistry together. Just don't get hurt, and you should be fine. <laughs> That's kind of how it works with those two. Um, we'll see, though, if Priest and Balor's tension carries over to either of their matches today, though. Mmm, they... They have been a bit side-eyeing each other lately, but we'll see what we got. I am picking Seth Rollins to retain the World Heavyweight Championship here. As nice it would, as it would be to see Finn come full circle with this, um, I, uh, Rollins losing it at the pay-per-view right away doesn't sound right to me. I'm thinking he should at least make it to SummerSlam because I'm not expecting a long title reign. We have Roman doing his thing, so the World Heavyweight Championship shouldn't really be in the hands of anyone too, too long. But maybe this would be a big surprise on here. Maybe Finn is going to win. It could happen. It could happen, and there could also be a cash-in during or afterwards because, ha, 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 two world champions on the show... Look out. Depends when the men's Money in the Bank ladder match is. If we're lucky, it's first in the show. If we're lucky, we'll see what happens. Uh, before Money in the Bank, though, one more match to talk about. Cody Rhodes and Dominic Mysterio. The fact that this has been built up for so long has mystified me. I really didn't think this was making the pay-per-view. Um, but I'll get right to the point on this one. It's got to be Dom, right? Right? Like, you didn't give him the win at Mania, which I completely understood. I picked Rey Mysterio for that match. Going in the Hall of Fame, that would have been such a ridiculous feeling of him losing to his kid. But we didn't do that then. Here, I kind of want to see Dom get it, and this would be a nice little reward for all the heel heat he's been getting lately. Because the man is booed to hell wherever he goes. Wherever he goes. He's like the Don Callis of the WWE. It's amazing. It is honestly amazing the heat this guy has. So, yeah, I, I would rather see him beat Cody, and I really believe that we're going to have Brock Lesnar interfere in this somehow, some way. I buy the fact that him and Cody are going at it one more time at SummerSlam in a stipulation match, please, for the love of God. I don't know what, but something, something will do. Another last man standing with Brock, I'll take that. Uh, steel cage match, something. Something along those lines. So... Unsanctioned match, even. Just something along those lines. They're one and one. I want to see them do it one more time. We can't just drop it like we did Lashley and Lesnar. That should have been at WrestleMania this year. <sighs> Speaking of Lashley, man, he really hasn't been doing much lately, has he? Damn. Damn, that's a nag. Lashley's great. Anyway, 
Put Lashley in Money in the Bank. If, if we're going to do any surprise nonsense, have Lashley come out and join the Money in the Bank field. Anyway, uh, aside from stuff, picking Dominic Mysterio, cheap win as heck, moving on. Now it's time to talk about the Money in the Bank ladder matches. First up, we got the women's. And, oh my, I must say, we've got a good field for the ladies this year. Really good field. This one is not easy to predict for me. We've got Zelina Vega, Becky Lynch, Zoe Starks, Bailey, EO Sky. And on Canada Day, we've got Trish Stratus in this match. That is the biggest surprise so far for me. I didn't think she was going to qualify because I just couldn't see Trish in this kind of match at this point in her career. I thought, if anything, she would be backing Zoe and maybe do an interference spot. But no, she's in the bleeding thing. So, well, I wonder who I'm going to pick for my Raw side. So, hence, if you haven't been following, when I do these kind of predictions, usually for the Royal Rumble of Money in the Bank, I have a Raw and SmackDown pick. My Raw pick is undeniably Trish Stratus. Win it on Canada Day, Trish, please. Becky could win, but I think they had more potential with her in the briefcase last year when she was a heel. So, I don't think she needs to get it this year. And correct me if I'm wrong, didn't she pull the briefcase down on Monday? Or was that somebody else? It's usually a rule where if you grab it prematurely, you ain't winning. Unless maybe your name's Dean Ambrose, because I think he did that in 2016 and ended up winning it. Anyway, Trish for the Raw pick. Smackdown's not that easy, because honestly, at this point, I'm starting to forget who's where again with it. <clears throat> so, on Raw, it's Trish, um, Zoe, and Becky, correct? So that means SmackDown, isn't it Bailey, EO, and Zelina? I guess out of those three, I would probably pick Bailey to win. I feel like this would be when she costs EO or the other way around, maybe. I feel like this is when these two maybe implode. If there's a surprise person added, uh, it could be um, Shotzi because of what they did to her SmackDown, but there's a nasty rumor starting now. Oh boy, I can definitely believe it the way WWE acts during these matches sometimes. Guess who got screwed out of her women's championship match on SmackDown? That's right. The rumor standing is Charlotte Flair is going to be added to this match and end up winning it. Well, that's a slap in the face, I'll tell you that much, but the thing is, she hasn't touched this yet, has she? No, I haven't seen Charlotte with this yet, so if Charlotte gets added, that is a huge pick going into things. Uh, I want to say she did get drafted to SmackDown, so technically, it would stand as a SmackDown pick, so if Charlotte's added to this match, she's my pick on SmackDown. I'll stick with Bailey. otherwise, if things can stay normal. Otherwise, my raw pick is the biggest confidence going into this, and that's Trish Stratus. Happy Canada Day, Trish, you sexy beast. On to the men's money in the bank. Seven. That's right, seven, because they put Logan Paul in it. Oh, sweet Lord, that was a smart choice when it comes to dumb star power. Because, again, here's my thing. I'm not a social media junkie. I don't know Logan Paul that well outside of WWE. So when he came in and started doing his stuff, I loved him. And I still love him. He's fantastic. I don't care about his personal life. Stay in the WWE ring and I'll enjoy. Is he going to win, though? Mm, well, let's look at who else we have in this again. SmackDown side, we got Santos Escobar. Butch, be done. Who got a nice win on Friday, I must say. And LA Knight, yeah! Raw, on the other hand, we've got Ricochet. Deserved. Nakamura. Deserved. And Damian Priest. Now, for everyone who doesn't understand why I'm putting some emphasis on Priest, can we think back to February, please? The man botched a promo, as would everyone else, at least once in their career, when he was referring to the Elimination Chamber match at the time for the United States Championship coming up. He referred to it as the money in the bank, and he tweeted after he should be winning the bloody thing. Well, look where he is now. So, yeah, as likely as WWE could be to put the briefcase on Logan Paul, I'm picking Damian Priest for my Raw pick. I really buy that because of the Finn Balor stuff, and depending where this match is placed on the card, Damian Priest wins the Money in the Bank ladder match. The guy deserves it. He's a great talent. He's built up his character so well and hasn't flopped. I think we should be putting some stock in this as long as he doesn't go the way of Baron Corbin with it, please. 
Priest is great. I'd love to see him with it. SmackDown, though, you know my SmackDown pick. Yeah, LA Knight, the guy that everybody wants to see win this weekend. He's got a better chance at it now if we do WWE 50-50 booking. He lost on SmackDown. He didn't grab the briefcase at the top. No, Butch did that and ruined his chances of winning this match, in my opinion. And I don't see Santos taking it. If there's one thing that screws LA Knight out of this, it's that it seems like the aftermath plans are just a LA Knight LWO feud. And I don't think the Money in the Bank briefcase holder would be involved in that. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. That's just nitpicking. But either way, my picks, Damian Priest, LA Knight. Yeah, this briefcase right here, shoes of a champion. Now we hope. We hope we get a good show. I think we're going to get a good show. Are we going to get everything we want? Ah, if we want to follow my stupid luck of things. I went to AEW Forbidden Door. I was there in person. I got what I want. Very much so on the spectrum of things. Canada's champion Orange Cassidy winning. Elevated Will Ospreay winning. Final Countdown Brian Danielson winning. If we can apply that to this pay-per-view, I'm going to get what I want. And the world is a good place. Thank you everyone for watching and listening. Keep your eyes glued to the channel for my results and review. It might come out today. I do have things I'm looking forward to doing otherwise today besides wrestling. If not, I'll see you tomorrow and let me know what you're looking forward to most about the show. What are you most expecting? What's going to be the major turnoff if it doesn't happen? Hit me up. Like, share, subscribe. I will see you all later. Let's get ready for some wrestling. Money in the bank. Keep it real. Happy Canada Day.